Number 17, find the points of intersection of the graphs of the equations. We have two polar equations. We have r is equal to 1 plus cosine of theta, and we have r is equal to 1 minus cosine of theta. And we're going to use a slider, uh, a going from 0 to 2 pi, and a is used for both polar equations. So before we even do that, consider what happens when theta is equal to 0 for the first polar equation. Cosine of 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So you get the point with polar coordinates 2, 0, which would be right here. So you would have a point on, the, on our first curve with polar coordinates 2, 0. On the other curve, when theta is equal to 0, cosine of 0 is 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So you will have a point at the pole with polar coordinates 0, 0. So the second curve will actually start at the pole. And when theta is equal to pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1. So on the first curve, we will have a point here with polar coordinates 1 pi over 2. And on the second curve, when theta is equal to pi over 2, you'll have cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and 1 minus 0 is also 1. So you will also have this point on the second curve. And that would be a point of intersection for the two graphs. And notice that that particular point of intersection happens at the same value of theta for both polar equations. So we start at theta is equal to 0. And as I move the slider, you can see the two graphs being traced. And now I get to theta is equal to pi over 2, and you can see that there is a point of intersection. And that's something that you would find if you were to set the two polar equations equal to each other and solve for theta. But as we keep going, what do we find? Now look at the first curve shown in red. It's going to intersect the second curve shown in blue at the pole. But notice that that happens at different values of theta for the two polar equations. For the blue curve, we have a point at the pole when theta is equal to 0. For the red curve, we have a point at the pole when theta is equal to pi because cosine of pi is negative 1, and 1 plus negative 1 is 0. For the blue curve, when theta is equal to pi, cosine of pi is negative 1, and 1 minus negative 1 is 2. So we have the point r theta, where r is 2 and theta is equal to pi on the blue curve. But on the red curve, we have the point r theta, where r is equal to 0 and theta is equal to pi. But on the blue curve, we have a point at the pole when theta is equal to 0 because cosine of 0 is 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0. So this particular point of intersection of the two curves, you wouldn't get that by setting the two equations equal to each other and solving for theta. It is a point of intersection, but it occurs at different values of theta. So you would miss it if you relied solely on an algebraic approach to finding the coordinates of the points of intersection of the two curves. That is why, in addition to working on this problem algebraically, you need to look at the graphs of the two polar equations to see if you're missing a point of intersection that takes place at different values of theta on the two curves. And if I continue with the sketching, you will see that when I get to theta is equal to 3 pi over 2, I have a point of intersection on the two curves. 
this particular point of intersection occurs at the same value of theta on both polar curves. Theta is equal to 3 pi over 2. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. So 1 plus 0 is 1. And on the red curve, we have the point with polar coordinates r theta, 1, 3 pi over 2. And on the blue curve, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. And we will have this point on the blue curve with polar coordinates 1, 3 pi over 2. So this particular point, along with this one, you'll get those by setting the two polar equations equal to each other and solving for theta because those two points of intersection occur at the same value of theta on both polar curves. And if I continue, you'll see that each cardioid is completed when I get to 2 pi. But the point that I want to make is you wouldn't get the point of intersection at the pole by setting the two polar equations equal to each other and solving for theta, because although the pole is a point of intersection of the two polar curves, the two polar curves get to the pole for different values of theta, so you would miss it if you relied only on the algebraic approach and did not look at the graph. So the moral of the story is, look at the graph when you're looking for coordinates of points of intersection of polar curves, and then you can also do the algebraic approach, setting the two polar equations equal to each other and solving for theta.